Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Natalie, So Hungry Hippie. I see Tamara and Sierra are here already. How awesome. How are you guys doing? Tamara, you're in Austin. I bet it's hot. It is so cold here <laughs> today. It just suddenly dropped. Um, okay. Well, I'm just going to get right into it. Thanks for being here, first of all, and let me know how you guys are doing. I know we've been in some challenging times recently, so just drop a comment and let me know you're doing okay. Hi, Bethany. Hi, Freddie, Suzanne, Ella Lou. Hi, everyone. Okay, so today my demo is going to be a drawstring bag. I'm using Jenny Baker's pattern, and let me tell you why. In this pattern, you have, I think it's something like 14 different size options. And it's just nice when you are in the mood to sew, to sit down and have all those measurements already done for you and planned out and step-by-step, step, just follow the steps and you'll have a successful bag at the end of it. So that's why I really like this pattern. I took this pattern a few years ago and made some very oversized bags that then I used to roll up my duvets from winter or quilts or whatever, and they're in my laundry, linen closet, whatever you call it, in the hallway on the off seasons. So you can really make this pattern work for you. We do have it in the shop listed in case you don't have it already. It's worth having the paper pattern, definitely. To me it is. I like visuals, I like seeing it, and I like the see, looking at the diagrams when I'm sewing if I just can't think straight. This one is quite a small bag that I made just the other day. You can see there's an accent at the top and then classic Natalie, I messed up my measurements. So I have a little pop of different fabric at the bottom. Just fixed it on the fly, it's no big deal. The bags are lined, just so you know, they are lined. And I do use fabric for my ties as well. You can use ribbon or shoelace or twill tape if you want to have faster ties. I just like using up the scraps and remnants that are left over for my ties. So there we are. I've already got my sample bag here cut out. I'm going to just sew it in front of you and show you how I do my corners a little bit differently just because that's how my brain works. I am making the artist size bag. So when you open the pattern, there are some sizes right here and I'm doing the artist bag. Okay, so let me get right into this. And then we have some fun things to show you towards after the demo and also we'll announce two weeks ago the winner for this week's gift card. All right, so because I'm using fat quarters, my exterior bag, one side is going to be this, and one side is going to be this. Don't let that confuse you. I just wanted to use what I had already opened here in the shop, and I didn't want to use up yardage at the moment. So I am going to take one of the most important things about this pattern is please note your exterior piece is a little bit shorter because you have an accent piece. And then your lining pieces are just a smidge bigger to make up for that accent piece. So here's my lining. And also Jenny's measurements are height by width, which is not usually how I think when I'm sewing and cutting. So I just go in there and I mark H and W along the measurements so that I don't get confused. You may or may not need to do that. So right now I'm going to take one of the exterior fabric pieces and I'm going to sew it right sides together with the accent, which goes at the top of the bag. And Ramel, will, you will just uh, let me know if there's any questions that I'm missing or... Now I'll take this over and press the seam. You wanna see. Yeah. 
I'm not going to interface this bag. I find that it is just fine without interfacing. You can definitely interface it. If you're gonna do that, I would use SF-101 along the exterior. And I would interface it at this point. Once you have these two pieces, the accent and the uh, main fabric together, I would flip it over and I would do one big piece of interfacing right now, like this. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. Okay. So there's one side of the exterior bag. They already sewed this one. There's the other side. I'm going to put those over here for a second. And then I'm going to press my lining. Just like to work with really flat fabric, no wrinkles. This elixir fabric has little metallic detail to it. I just love it. And I like, especially when it's my first time through a pattern, I do like using non-directional fabric just in case. All right, let's go to the front, Ramel. Now, the way you're going to line this up is very clear in Jenny's pattern. And it's, it's going to be this little diagram in the top left on page four. I always have to look at that when I'm lining this puppy up. So I'm going to do lining. See, I have to look at it again, and I've made this a million times. Do you have the overhead ready to go, Ramel? Yeah. I know this space is kind of small, but that might help. So, yeah, can we zoom back, like not so far in, so they can... All right, well, it's still kind of hard to see. You can't back up any more than that? Oh, well, that's what I need. Here's how you're lining this up. Here's a lining piece. You've got your exterior accent piece, the outside. Then you're going to have the outside again, but you want the accent piece facing this direction. Let me move the machine for a second. And then the final lining piece. And just take a second now to make sure everything is facing the right directions. So exterior, this is the main part of the bag, these two, which for you will probably be the same fabric. These are the accent pieces. And these are the lining pieces. OK? So now we're just going to sew everything right sides together. I like to pin so that I know what direction or what seam I'm going to be sewing right there. And I sort of batch it. And I'll bring my machine up here and do this quick. I was going to try and tell you guys a ghost story while I was sewing. <laughs> and then I thought, maybe that's a little too ambitious. This one right away, tuck it in here. I'm just using my foot as my seam allowance guide and I'll just stick with it the whole way through. 
Can you move to front camera? I don't know. All right, one more seam here. Now we're sewing the two exterior bags, right sides together. So you end up with this really long, almost like a table runner length. Oh, good. Ramel worked really hard on that, Tamara. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. Woo. I am wearing shoes. I have boots on, actually, so it's hard. It, you know, depth perception is a little off today. That's all right. Okay. Front camera. Yep. So now I've got this big, long piece. And yours might be bigger or smaller, depending on the size bag you're making. Don't worry. I'm going to fold it in half so that the the two lining pieces match at the end here. Just like this. And now move to the overhead so they can see how I'm going to mark this. So this is the accent piece here. Mine happens to be six inches wide. Move in a little, Ramel. So this, I've made a marking right in the middle at three inches. And then with my little ruler, on either side of that, I'm going to make a mark because this, this is a half an inch from the center. This is a half inch. So, so we're going to have a one inch opening here. Get a little closer than that, please. So this will be the channel all the way down. I've already made my markings down here for the drawstring cords to go through. So I'm gonna pin this and we're gonna start sewing all the way around, but we're not gonna sew that opening on both sides of this accent piece, okay? Yep. Okay, let's take it over here. Now I've already sewn this seam here, so I don't bother going over this a second time. You can if you want to. Okay. Uh huh. How big of a bag does the pattern allow? The big ones, like you mentioned at the beginning. So, Kat, there are size options in the pattern already. And uh, then there's on this back sheet, there's a formula that you can pop in and make any size bag. So it's right here and you'll just follow this formula. What I did when I made the really big bags for my duvet is I just guesstimated and I, I kind of took, like I wanted it to come up to my waist, took that measurement and kind of just guessed at the width and it worked. But there is an exact formula on page seven of the pattern and it works every time. And sometimes I'll just leave off the accent at the top and just add in exterior fabric if you don't want that accent piece. So here I'm coming up to my markings. So I'm going to skip that little inch and then start again. I make my lining seam allowance just slightly larger. You don't have to do that on a on a drawstring bag, but it's just kind of a, a habit I've gotten into from bag making. So it's just a smidge bigger so that it's tighter fitting. 
coming around this last side. Here we go. And up to that last marking. Now, if you sewed over your opening, just unpick them now with a little seam ripper. Can you go to front? Don't, don't despair. It's going to be just fine. Okay. Now I have to get back to the pattern. On my pattern at home, I make myself all these little notes and everything. Do you do that with paper patterns? I love having my notes. Sticky notes everywhere? No, like little, you know, because sometimes the way something is worded is not how you think of it in your brain. So I will just write myself a note because who knows when I'll come back to make this again. I don't want to go through that whole process all over again, you know. Okay, so this is the part where Jenny does her boxed corners with a different method. And it'll work, but I suggest that you watch her. YouTube video on how to do her method of boxed corner. I like to do mine the way I do them in bags. So it's a little bit different than the pattern here. It's great to, to know more than one technique because you may find a technique that you prefer. So let me bring this here. I think I did something wrong. No, just hold on a second. Oh, yeah, the lining. I should have kept a little bit of an opening in the lining. That's okay. Just pop this open a bit. That's what I get for talking. Okay, so leave yourself a little bit of an opening in the bottom of the lining. You could also do the side. It's personal preference, but I'll just keep it simple. So now what I do is I take the lining bag and the exterior bag and I fold them together like this. Now you can go to the overhead. I'm deviating from the pattern on this, sec on this little part because this is how I think of doing boxed corners, okay? So, and I'm gonna use this red marker so you can see. Can you zoom in, please? Thanks. I'm gonna mark a 2.25 inch boxed corner on these bottom edges. Now for the artist bag, Jenny has you making a four and a half inch boxed corner, but it's not this method. It will end up the same as mine, but I have to let you know that my method for me is easier, but it's half of the measurement that she's talking about in the pattern. So here we go. Tell me if I get my head in the way, okay? There's one. Two and a quarter, two and a quarter. Okay, so I'm gonna pin these layers together so nothing moves. And I'm gonna cut all of the corners in, in two, two cuts. You wanna make a drawstring bag, Ramal? <laughs> okay, so now, as you probably know, this is same as always. We just pinch this apart, match our seams, and we're going to sew right across there. So I'm going to put a pin, and then maybe Ramel on the next one, can you zoom in a bit? Sometimes boxed corners are the hardest thing to visualize. Okay, good. So now I take... This is the lining, and I just kind of pinch it apart and then match the seams like this. Nest them so one seam is that way, one seam is that way. 
And then we're going to take this to the machine and sew right across here. We'll do that to the exterior as well. And then our, our bag is nearly there. We have our drawstring cord, sewing our casing, and then we're finished. And if you're going to make one, why not make three or five? Oh, he's just asking me, do you have a favorite fabric? What is that with the with the ghosts? What is that one called? I don't really like that one. Um, with the ghosts. Is that the Ruby Star? Can you go to the front camera? All right. Now maybe the sewing machine Ramel. make sure that this is flat. Sometimes I have to stick my finger in here and flatten out any wrinkles. I don't want to sew any wrinkles in there. So now here's our bag so far. We are going to pull it through that opening in the lining. Guess what? I left a pin inside. I didn't stick myself. Luckily, I felt it. Push, come in here and push out these corners with your index finger. Just make sure everything is caught. This is when I do a quick check. Yep, everything looks good, okay. So I am going to close up this opening since I'm here. And then we'll tuck this down in the bag. Now you'll want to use a matching thread and all that, but I figured it was easier to show on camera if it had a little pop. A lot of times I make these bags instead of doing wrapping paper. We have some birthdays coming up in October and I will definitely be making some more of these as gift gift wrappings. They're great at Christmas too or the holidays. Awesome. It's getting there. I think it's just really cute when the drawstring gets added inside. What'd she say? You can add on one of the cute labels you sell. Yeah, Dalva, this is such a good idea. The Sarah Hart's labels sticking out. That'd be so cute. Okay, so on, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. With this uh, opening here, if you want to go to overhead. Hi, Leanne. We've got this opening here for the drawstring. What I like to do with a friction pen a lot of times is come in so that I can make sure that my sewing line is going to be very straight. We're gonna sew all the way around the bag, catching both outer and inner lining layers at the same time. And that's our casing for the drawstring. I'm just gonna eyeball it on this one since I forgot my friction pen. And uh, start and go all the way around the bag. 
And don't fret too much. You know, if, if you don't have a friction pen and you're eyeballing it like I am, it'll be fine. Stop and start as many times as you need to. Needle down when you stop. Here we are coming up to this edge. I'm gonna stop just before because I can see I've got a little bit of a crease here. Okay. Do you sell friction pens? I don't currently cap, but if you give it give that a Google, it's spelled F-R-I-X-O-N. That's what I use most of the time. Just know that some people have complained the markings come back with weather changes, like in cold, really cold. So, you know, chalk is always safe. Uh, chalk is cheap. And oh, that wax uh, chalk, right? I don't use wax. I use chalk because you can just wipe it off. So that's another safe bet. I just buy the kind in the supermarket. Pencil can also work. It just can be a pain to get out. I use friction pens a lot, I will say that. But every time I post about using them, some the police come after me about, oh, well, watch out because the markings come back and, and temperature change. And I've only had that happen once, and as soon as I heated it up again, like a normal temperature, it was gone. So I think you just have to do what you're okay with. Yeah, I mean, if I was sending a quilt to a competition, I wouldn't mark it with friction pens, but I don't do that, so <laughs> Okay, we're ready to put in the drawstring. Now, for the drawstring, you're just going to cut. This piece is 40 inches long, and it's two inches wide. And we're just folding it like, uh, what's it called? Binding. Let me bring this over, and I'll show you an overhead, and then we'll finish this puppy up. So this is how it starts. Let's zoom in a little there. And you're bringing the long edges in to meet in the middle and give it a press. And then you'll fold it one more time and see how skinny it ends up. This is perfect for drawstring. A lot of times I will just piece these. This is pieced. I, I had to use what I have, so I piece mine. You could make it scrappy. That would be super cute as well. Don't worry about the seams. Just mash them flat with your iron. And then we sew down this length to close everything up. I love drawstrings made with quilting cotton. Is there a machine that could just do that? Well, you should invent it and then patent it. Oh. <laughs> I'm not sure. Is there? Oh, you mean my Simplicity Bias tape maker? Yeah. Yeah, that, uh, they don't make that anymore for some reason. I loved that thing, but, you know, I burned it up and because I used it so much. Okay, I'm going to sew down the long edge of this piece. Are you moving? You could use clips or pins if you need to. I find just holding it is fine, but just make sure you're not pulling on it because you don't want this to end up all twisty.
Can you go to front camera? This is uh, a Juki TL2000 QI. Had it for many years. So I'm going to do that to both drawstring pieces so that we have two. The kind of not intuitive, at least for me, thing about drawstrings is you have to have two pieces that go all the way around the bag. And one drawstring goes in one side of the bag and all the way around. And the other one goes in the other side and all the way around. And I don't know why, but years ago when I started making these, I didn't really get that until until I did get it, I guess. If you wanted a fast drawstring, you could use packaged bias tape also. They have some really cute prints now. I just saw some the other day at a big box store. It was like Halloween colors and plaid. It was cute. So I won't sit here and have you guys wait on me for this, but I will end up finishing that later. So now we've got this channel sewn, and I'm going to take my safety pin, just like I would an elastic waist, and I'm going to start threading it through. One of my tips is to put a pin in this end so that you don't accidentally pull the string in and then have to start over again. So can you move to overhead? So here's the opening and I'm going to start smushing it all around. And we're going past this opening. This is an opening as well but we don't come out here. We go right by it and keep going all the way around. I can feel it, we're getting close here. This is where we started, so this is where we come out at. Sometimes this part takes me a bit to get through. Come on, I see you. There it is. Now, the reason I put that pin down there is because when I start opening this up, sometimes that will just start pulling through and you'll lose the end. So that's why I stick a pin there. And then even these out. See how now those are even. Back it up a little bit. Okay, so there's that side. So now with my other drawstring, I will go in this opening all the way around. Okay, move to front. So I might as well just finish it up really quick so you guys can see how this pulls together so nicely. And you know, the thing about it is you can really use up your stash in a big way making these, especially if you have some presents to give that are on the larger side. This is way better than fighting that paper that just ends up in the landfill. 
Because then you can say, oh, actually, if you're not going to use that gift bag, can I have it back to store my quilts? I think they might say no because it'll be so cute. What do you think? I don't know. Would you want to keep it, even though you're not into textiles? Or would you give it back to the person? Well, obviously, it would be me, right? Maybe you'd want to put your CDs from 1995 in there, your collection. I, still have them. I know you do. Oh my gosh, one cent for 13 albums and yeah. and then they they get you because they mail something you don't want and you forget to return it. That was Columbia, wasn't it? Yeah. Columbia House or You guys remember that? <laughs> they did it with me. What if you gave me a gift in a homemade gift bag, I would never give it back to you. <laughs> Noted. I think it would be fun to just make a bunch of these drawstrings and just have them lined up, hanging up, ready to go. At the ready. Huh? I got sucked into that with books too. Because they were like, we'll send you 25 books for five cents. All you have to do is buy one book a month for the rest of your life. <laughs> I was like, sold. <laughs> okay, last one. We're going to go in this end. Oh, sure. That's probably a good idea. So I'm just taking my ginormous safety pin and going in this end. And this can be soothing if you let it be, if you frame your mind that way. Marie is asking where the pattern is. It's under Jenny Baker. I put it in the show description also, if you look there. Okay. Um, but if you search Jenny Baker, that the pattern will come right up. And you can comment it. I don't know, that would be good. Sometimes this gets pretty tight, so you want to come in here and loosen it all up. And I am almost back to the beginning. There it is. Oh, bless. Lover. Thank you, Erin. Okay, so now we want to make sure these are relatively even. Now, I usually will take my pinking shears and just not even worry about it. Come in here, cut the end off. If you use pinking shears, it will never, ever fray. You can also just do it like that. Who cares? Um, at some point here, I do like to do a knot. And that just prevents the drawstring from getting lost inside the casing if you have, you know, a, a child come along and really yank on these, you don't want to lose them. Okay, I'm going to clean this up and you can go to front camera. And there's my drawstring bag. And I think it's kind of fun having the different fabric. Just use use what you have. Use it up. This is a nice, easy sew. You can change the size. 
you know, however you need. It's lined. This is way better than those papery Amazon bags they send where you pay like $3.99 and it's a papery bag. This is way prettier. So there you have it. I hope you love it. And sorry about my coughing. <laughs> Doing the best we can, right? I'll give you a visual on this again. Jenny Baker, mastermind behind this pattern. If we're sold out in the store, we'll, I'll be restocking that pattern for sure. It's a good one to have in your arsenal. The links will also all be in the Sunday email that I send out every morning, every Sunday, every morning, every Sunday morning. <laughs> okay, are we ready to talk about some new stuff? Uh, yeah, do you wanna talk about the winners or not yet? We'll, we'll save that a little bit okay. longer. Right. Um, anticipation. <laughs> do you remember when I dragged you to Elmo Draft House and and said, we're gonna watch Rocky Horror Picture Show. That movie is so whack, <laughs> but it's it's awesome, I love it. That's what anticipation. Okay, you guys, so this print was one of the first prints I ever bought when I first started sewing. Can you believe this came out in 2005? Well, it did. And the reason it's still around is because it is so beautiful, so classic, so gorgeous. So I got in the laminated cotton. This is called Las Señoritas. And look at these gorgeous women. I just adore this print. So we have some yardage in the shop right now. I just listed it this morning. You can read all about it if you want to, but this is BPA free and safe and all of that. So if you want to use it for your snack bags, you can. I should show that. <coughs> Excuse me. I know you love this print, don't you, Amal? It's pretty. It's by Alexander Henry, of course. I have tons of Alexander Henry coming in whenever it comes in. I should probably mention that, too. We have a lot of fabric in the shop on pre-order, and we are expecting it in the next week, most of it, Firefly and Reverie. The only thing is, is I never know when Moda is going to ship it to me. But as soon as it gets here, I want you to know we come straight to the shop. We start cutting and sending out all those pre-orders. That's the first thing we do. That's what Mary is asking there. When will my order of Firefly Moons arrive in your store? Yeah, I don't know. So I do expect it very soon. I keep pestering Moda because... It's not very clear when things happen, but as soon as it gets here, it will ship. And I think we're gonna do things differently in the future. I, I wish I could do, I could keep doing pre-orders, but it just doesn't work for me. It seems that a lot of people miss the information, even though it's in the listing, that we don't know exactly when it will arrive. The, the fabric houses don't even know because it's all coming from overseas. So I think we're gonna have to figure out a different method because all the emails just, it's yeah. not working for us. <laughs> we're still feeling that the effects of, of the supply chain. Yeah, the supply chain is a mess, even still, you're, what is this, two, two years, years later. So um, believe me, I will get that out as fast as I can. I don't like having these orders on my shoulders that are open, just sitting there staring at me. So as soon as it gets here, it doesn't matter if it's 7 o'clock on a Friday night, I'll be here getting those orders out. So that being said, when I contacted them yet again this week, they had told me, they, they said ETA is 10-7. So that's today. today. <laughs> but that doesn't mean I'll have it today. Maybe they just got it. Yeah. So... Uh, just a word about that. So there's that. Also, I do want to reiterate, we have shipped orders that had some pre-order, uh, pre-orders inside of the order, but the policy is we hold the entire order till everything is in. 
But if you want your things sooner, please just email me in a kind way and I will be happy to send those out to you. But that is why there is a blurb on every listing that if your order includes pre-orders, the entire thing will hold until everything is in. Because shipping is expensive, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And it's going up, so we have to try and rein it in. But after this, you guys, we'll do it a different way. We're gonna figure it out. We'll do it a better way. We have some linen rayon blends that will be in the email this weekend. Quite a few. Also new rayon fabrics that I have not listed. I haven't had a chance. They will be listed and in the email this weekend. Rayon is a wonderful fabric, even for fall, because you can layer it. I love wearing tights and my rayon skirts and a uh, t-shirt and a sweater, and it just, it feels so great. So I just wanted to tell you about that email this weekend. It'll have lots of fun stuff in it. Thank you, Ramal, for reminding me. So I made this Santorini tote purse. This is what I'm carrying for the fall. This is soft black vinyl that I quilted in this diamond pattern. I'm sorry, I have to cough. <laughs> and, excuse me, I listed a few kits for this in the shop this morning. So what includes in the kit is this fun citron, like little skulls, cotton lining, uh, the black vinyl, and the skull zippers, which you get a whole pack of skull zippers with the gunmetal poles. Um, on this one, if you're in the Facebook group, I showed you how to make the Santorini a little less angled by tapering the sides up. So if you need that graphic, it is in the Facebook group. Go ahead and join us if you're not in there. I post a lot of, a lot of information in there. So if you want this kit, go grab it. Probably only going to have a few of those available because that fabric I cannot get anymore. The, the little skulls. Is that the one you were talking about? It, that was your favorite? The, the little skulls? That one? No. Uh, no. Okay. Okay. It's got, it's got uh, ghosts and stuff. Is it the like Hello Kitty bolt over there? I call it Hello Kitty. It's not actually Hello Kitty. Oh, it's this one right here. Yeah. Bring that over. Let's show them that again. This is Ramel's favorite fabric. Somebody was asking. And this is by Katie Cra uh, Crapshaw. Katie Larson. And this is um, in the shop. The colors are just really pretty and it's cute. It's got little skulls and ghosts and moons and stars. I love that one too. That's really cute. So, okay, so that is in the shop. Anything else, Ramel, that you can think of? I know we have a couple of new apron patterns in the shop and I really love them. And I'm wondering if you guys want a demonstration on those or would it be better maybe to do a video that you can just go reference on YouTube. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts if you have any thoughts. Oh my gosh, Ramel, somebody's spotting us, spamming. Oh, no. Gotta take care of that. Uh, how I'm gonna... I don't know, block. Yeah, yep, good, good job. <laughs> okay, uh, I think that is it. I am going to announce that Esther Henry is the winner from two weeks ago on the live. If you can email me, Hester, Esther, Natalie at SoHungryHippie.com, I will send you your gift card. And it's for $25, anything in the shop. So Kathy's saying yes, apron demo. Okay, I will think about that. I'll show you guys this one that I made the other day. And I really, really like it. I've worn it a few times already. And it's reversible. Um, the inside is this wonderful pink ruby star fabric with little spider webs, but they look like lace doilies. It's so cute. And that's this pattern by Mary Mulari. So, okay, I will, 
I don't think about that demo. I just want to make sure you can see everything and that it's clear. And sometimes on a live, that can be harder to do. So, okay, I think that's it. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I really appreciate you. I announced it, okay. Esther. And I hope to see you next week, next Friday. All right, you take care. Bye.